Hi everyone and welcome to another video from youmakerobots.com uh, In this video uh, we're going to show you how to make a retro computing tape deck emulator from an Arduino So if you're into retro computing uh, and you have one or multiple retro computers from let's say the 80s uh, back then, you know, 30 years ago, you'd actually load up games and applications using a cassette, right? A cassette deck. Um, 30 years on, you know, those cassette decks are hard to find. Those cassettes are degraded. They don't perform as well as they used to. And um, a lot of the media, the games and applications were convert converted to digital format a long time ago. So regardless of what you know type of retro computer you've got, if you search the internet, you'll be able to find all those games or a lot of those games on the internet in digital format. Um, some of them have a very specific file format or a lot of them you can download as, as WAV files. Because essentially when you're loading a game from a tape cassette, you're actually playing an audio file. So if you can grab those audio files yeah, in WAV file format, um, you can play them back through your retro computer uh, through the audio port if your retro computer has an audio port. Now this, this principle, this concept is not new. There are other Arduino, Arduino projects on the internet that uh, have successfully done this uh, already. Um, the big issue for me, and this is why I kind of reinvented the wheel with this project, was some retro computers are quite sensitive about how the audio is played back to them. Uh, take, for example, the one in our uh, demo video this week. Uh, this is a Sharp MZ700. If you try to use one of the existing retro tape deck uh, Arduino projects um, what would happen with the Sharp MZ700 is you'd fail because um, they rely on traditional Arduino boards which play audio through a PWM port which is pulse wave modulation right and um, this particular retro computer is quite sensitive about the PWM ports so for me, I had to kind of really find an alternative solution based on a Arduino device that uh, has digital audio, right? And not, not, you know, playing the audio file through pulse wave mo modulation. Uh, what I found was uh, an Arduino Duo, or, and we'll show you this later, which is uh, kind of the same thing, but in a nano format. This is called a nano arm. And what we've got here, uh, and we'll talk about the code in a minute, is uh, you know a standard LCD screen and uh, an SD card. So my games and apps are on this SD card. And just for testing purposes, we've got a, a button keypad. So this is going to help me move backwards and forwards through the games and apps. And then um, when I'm ready, I'll press play and it'll start to play. So, uh, the first thing we've got is, if you can see, the LCD screen is, uh, is, is really essentially a list of the games that are seen on this SD, are noticed on this SD card. And the first line shows you the file name in a short uh, file name format, so 8.3 format. Uh, and the second line shows you the full, full name of the file name that's going to be played. Um, now, this is quite important because actually, this is how this solution differs from the existing tape, the retro tape deck solutions. Uh, the library driver for both of these Arduino devices requires that you send uh, the file name to those libraries in 8.3 format, so the short form file name format which is what you see on the first line. But I kind of wanted to spruce it up a little bit and show the actual way, you know, the actual long file format of the wave on the second screen, because you might have some file names that are quite similar. So 
Uh, I'll talk about the code in a minute. I'll get back to that and, and I'll show you how I did that because there was some, you know, complexity around that as well. Just making that whole thing of having the long and short file names together on the same screen. Uh, if I just move over to the, the button keypad, if I just kind of move, and you can see I've, I've actually just, I'll just do that again. All right, here I have my button keypad, and we can move through the old games. Yeah, there you go. Move back. It's not, oh, you know, 100% responsive, but that's kind of just a quirk of the code. So the idea is now I've got a game selected, right, yeah, in web file format. What's going to happen is, once I hit the play button, which is the third button at the top, right, it's uh, this Arduino device is going to play that WAV file through the DAC ports, which are over here. Uh, they go into this audio cable into the back of the retro computer. Um, and uh, a few minutes later, we'll see a game. So, you know, let's see that in action, right? So, first of all, the first thing we need to do is turn on the retro computer. Uh, actually, it's on the other side. So we've got a screen now on this computer. If you press L and then enter, it's now in a state of waiting for the, the file to be loaded. So I'll put the camera back down for a second. If I hit the play button here, which is this one, you'll see the screen change to play. Um, after a few moments, so we're going to have to speed up the video a little bit, uh, we'll see uh that the screen says load in the game so there you go loading f1200 which is also known as bomber man so i'm going to speed up the video now for a little bit uh and we'll come back when the look at when the game's loaded so the game's now loaded um uh, as you can see it's successfully loaded up uh that would never have worked on this computer with the uh existing retro tape deck emulator solutions based on Arduino. It purely relied on the fact that we've got a DAC digital audio port on this particular Arduino device. Um, and well, there you go, you know, there you got it, You've successful game loaded. Um, before we jump into the code, let me just show you the difference and talk about the difference on the other board that we've got. The principle's the same. Um, now, what I've got here is I actually took the keypad off to use on my other Arduino, but really I should just put it back in here. Um, the code's the same. You'll notice there's a difference with the screen now. So, whereas we had a LCD 16 by 2 screen before, I'm now using a low powered OLED screen here. The reason for that is these particular boards are um, you know quite low power they drain a lot of power and i just found it very difficult to try and power everything together as well as run audi digital audio and the best solution i found was actually just to uh, use an oled uh, screen right um there is a slight difference in the audio library as well so uh i managed with this particular unit just to take the mono 8-bit WAV files, which is normally how uh, you know retro games come, um, load it up in the SD, and that would play straight away, no problem. Um, you know, principles the same. I'd have a, a menu screen here, and I could flip backwards and forwards through the games, and then press play. However, with this one, the audio driver, yeah, they had a bit of a quirk. I had to basically upgrade the WAV files to 16-bit or 32-bit format from the 8-bit format. Anyway, you, you saw it works. That's all we need is a working solution. Um, I'll document all of this uh, and uh, you know I'll probably put it uh, put the instructions up with the code on GitHub somewhere. So we'll, we'll link this back in the video description later. But let's uh, let's switch over to the actual code itself. Let's have a look at that. So this is the this is the code for the Arduino Duo, and uh, I kind of need to explain a few things. I talked about before that you know we had a bit of a challenge getting the long and short file names together, and the reason for this is is both of those audio drivers, regardless whether it's the audio driver for the Duo, Duo or 
I keep calling it Geo, but it's Geo, um, or the Arduino Zero, right? Uh, require that the file name be sent in short for file format, right? Um, and um, and it requires that you instantiate a an object called file, which comes from the SD library. Now, the quirk, and this was this took a little bit of programming on my part, was actually if you put the SD fat library, yeah, which we use here and the SD library in the same piece of code, uh, we get a few problems. So if the first thing is, is you can't instantiate an object of type file. Um, so I kind of needed to find a workaround. And, and the workaround really was to put SD fat into its own little class. And we call SD fat to get the long file names uh, into an array. Yeah, and that's what this string does right yeah, here um outside of the main code so my code actually grabs the long file names in it from a different class uh queries the sd card gets all the long file names stores them in a in an array right um and then we get the short file names because the audio driver requires the you know this object of type file to be created and you can't do that if you've got the sd fat library uh, running as well as the SD library in the same piece of code. So you you know you'll get the example code given to you. Uh, you'll be able to download this from GitHub, and I'll put a link there. Uh, but that was quite kind of a quirk of what we had to do to actually make this work. You know, to get that idea of having uh, long and short file names together in the same piece of code. And, and the rest of it really is, you know, nothing too fancy. It's just about getting, you know, those file names displayed on the screen and then some button presses. So we've got, you know, forwards, backwards and play. So if any of those buttons are pressed, something should happen, right? Yeah, if forwards pressed, we need to move forward through the, the, uh, the list of file names. If back is pressed, we need to move back through the list of file names. But if play is pressed, we go to the play code, which, uh, you know, then starts to set up the audio driver with the correct file name of type file uh, and then plays the file through the audio port. And once it's finished, you know, goes back to the main menu again. Uh, and it's as simple as that. Thank you for watching. Download the code. Oh, and by the way, if you need to find out where to get any of these devices, all you need to do is head over to www.youmakerobots.com. Thank you.